Test 10 review covering module 10, working with quadratic functions. Question one, describe the translation below as it relates to the parent function. So the parent function is f of x equaling x squared. Now with the parent function with transformations would look like this, f of x equaling a, which is our dilation, times x minus h squared plus k. Our h right here is our horizontal movement, and our k right here is our vertical movement. Now if I look at here, I have an x plus 3, which really means this is x minus a negative 3. X minus a negative three is the same thing as X plus three. Now I can see my X, my X, my minus, my minus, my H is in the same location as the negative three. So from zero for the parent function, is that zero, zero? To get to negative three, I would go left three. And then the K, it has a minus 17. That means I go down 17. Example two, identify the dilation. So this is our A in our equation of the following function as it relates to the parent function. So now to help you with this, there are a couple of things you have to keep in mind. We have vertical. So we have a vertical stretch and we have a horizontal compression, you have both of those when our A is greater than one. So they're gonna both gonna look the same, the graph's gonna look the same, but the equation is written a little bit differently. Then we're also gonna have vertical compression, and we have a horizontal stretch. And for both of those, our A or our dilation is going to be less than one. Now for it, for it to be vertical, the vertical, the A has to be outside the parentheses. And for horizontal, the A has to be inside the parentheses. So now if I look at my examples here, I have f of x equaling 7x squared. There is no parentheses, so we can consider that outside. If there were parentheses, outside the parentheses. So this is a vertical. And because it's greater than 1, a is greater than 1 or 7, that's going to be a vertical stretch. The second example, f of x equaling 3 fourths x squared. There's no parentheses, so we consider that outside, so that's vertical. And if it's, if it's vertical, now we have to determine if it's a stretch or compression. My A is 3 fourths, which is less than 1, so this would be a vertical compression. The next one, f of x equaling 5x squared, where the 5 is on the inside, our A is on the inside of the parentheses, so that tells us this is horizontal. And because this is greater than 1, this is a horizontal compression. And then f of x equaling 2 thirds x squared, where the 2 thirds is on the inside, this is horizontal. And because it's less than 1, that would be a horizontal stretch. Question 3. Write a quadratic function of a graph that passes through negative 9, 0, negative 2, negative 28, and 2, 0. Now, when I'm given the coordinates and I have the zeros, the easiest thing would be to keep the function in, write the function in uh, factored form. So in factored form, it would be y equals a times x minus m times x plus p. 
Now the M and the P and the plus or minus, they can be anything, any number. It all depends on what our zeros are. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my zeros, which I have my zeros here and here. So I'm going to have X equals a negative 9. To make a binomial, I have to make that equal to 0. So I'm going to add 9 to both sides. So then I can find my 0, which would be, as a binomial, which would be X plus 9 equals 0. So that would be 1, my one of my uh, binomials that I'll use in my equation. The next one I have x equaling a positive 2. To make that equal to 0, I'm going to subtract 2 on both sides. And I have x minus 2 equals 0. So I have 2 thirds of my equation. All I need to do is find my a, and that's what this third point is for. This is going to be my x, and this is going to be my y. So then my y, negative 28, equals my a, which I'm going to find, times, I'm going to use these two binomials now, and instead of an x, I'm going to put negative 2. So negative 2 plus 9 times negative 2 minus 2. And now I solve for a. So negative 2 plus 9 is 7. So I have 7, I have an a, and then negative 2 minus 2 is a negative 4. a times 7 times negative 4 is a negative 28a, and this all equals a negative 28. To get a by itself, I'm just going to divide everything by negative 28, and a is going to equal 1. So my equation in factor form would be y equals my a, which is 1, times x plus 9, times x minus 2. Question 4. Solve x squared minus 2x minus 14 equals 0 by completing the square. And the formula for completing the square would be b divided by 2 squared. So the first thing I'm going to do is get this minus 14 to the other side. So I'm going to add 14 to both sides. And now I have x squared minus 2x plus blank, plus blank because I'm going to complete the square, equals 14 plus blank. Because remember, whatever I do on one side, I must do on the other. So my b in this case is a negative 2. Divide that by 2, and I get negative 1. Square the negative 1, and I get 1. So I'm going to put a 1 here. And since I'm adding 1 over here, I'm going to be adding 1 on this side. Now I have a perfect square trinomial, which I can factor as a binomial squared, which this will be x, the square root of x squared is x squared, or is x. I use the same sign here, so it's minus, and then half of this middle term, 2, is 1. Equals. 14 plus 1 is 15. Now to undo a square, I find the square roots. And the square roots of this one would be x plus, minus 1 equals, and I'm going to round this to the nearest, in this case I'm going to do a nearest hundredth, two decimal places. So the square root of 15 is a positive 3.87 and a negative 3.87. To get x by itself, I'm going to add 1 to both sides. And my solutions would be x can equal a 4.87, and it can also equal a negative 2.87. Question 5. We're going to graph this quadratic and identify the domain and range. The first thing I'm going to do is identify my axis of symmetry. And the formula for the axis of symmetry is negative b divided by 2a. So this would be my b is a negative 4. So I have a negative negative 4 divided by 2 times my a, which is a negative 2. Negative negative 4 is 4 divided by negative 4 will give us a negative 1. So my axis of symmetry 
is at negative 1. So I'm going to put my axis of symmetry down here at negative 1. So my vertex is going to be on the axis of symmetry. So if I put negative 1 in for x, I can find my y. So negative 2 times negative 1 squared minus 4 times negative 1 minus 3. That's going to give me a y value of negative 1. So I have a vertex at negative 1, negative 1. So I'm going to put my point there first. And then I need to plot a point on each side of the vertex. If x is 0, that means I have my y-intercept, which is at negative 3. So I'm going to put a point at negative 3 here. And I can mirror this. Since I'm one step to the right of the vertex, I can go one step to the left. And then I have my parabola. And now I can just draw my parabola here. And we can answer our question, which is the domain. The domain for all parabolas is all real numbers. The range. The range, I look at my, my vertex. My vertex, the highest point is negative 1. It never goes above negative 1, so this would be less than or equal to negative 1. Question 6. The length of rectangle xy for, is 4xy. 4x and its width is x plus 3. Find the dimensions of the rectangle when the area is 352 square inches. So again, area of a rectangle is length times width. And we know the length is 4x and the width is x plus 3. So if I take those two, uh, 4x times x plus 3, I should get an area of 352. So if I distribute, I get 4x squared plus 12x. And then I'm going to subtract this 352 to both sides so I can have a trinomial. From this point, I can factor. I'm going to factor a 4 out, and that gives me x squared plus 3x minus 88, all this is going to equal 0. To factor this further, I got to think, what do I multiply to get negative 88, but add together gives me a 3. And that would be, give me a positive 11 and a negative 8. And if all of these are equal to 0, I make each of these factors equal to 0. But since I'm finding perimeter, or not perimeter, uh, length, I can only use positive values. So the only one of these values, like if I did 4, make that equal to 0. Well, 4 will never equal to 0, so I won't worry about the 4. If I did x plus 11 equaling 0, x would have to be a negative 11, which would not make sense if I put a negative 11 in for x. I can't have a length of negative 44. So I'm not going to worry about that one. If I have x minus 8 equals 0, I add 8 to both sides, and x would equal 8. Now, if x is 8, I can find the length and the width by putting 8 in for x. So the length would be 8 times 4, which is 32. That would be 32 inches. And the width, the width would be 8 plus 3, which would give us 11. So 11 inches. And if you would do 32 times 11, you would get 352. Question 7. So as a frog sitting on a stump three feet high hop, hops off and lands on the ground, during its leap, its height h is given in feet. h is in feet is given by, the, by h equals negative 0.5 d squared plus 2d plus 3, where d is the distance from the base of the stump how far is the frog from the base of the stump when it lands on the ground? What is the maximum height of the frog during its leap? So if I were to draw a quick diagram here, we're just saying the frog is jumping here, jumps up, and then it lands back down. What we want to find out is how high 
So this is our height. And then we want to find this distance, which is our D, from the, the stump, which the stump is right here. So how far did he jump from here to here and how high? Now to do this, it'll be quicker just to put it on our calculator. So I'm going to grab my calculator, have the y equals, and we're going to put our equation in here, which I have negative 0 0.5. Instead of a d, I'm going to put an x. So that's x squared. And then I have plus 2x plus 3. And then I'm going to hit graph. So we, there's our parabola. I'm going to change my window settings so I can see the, the height. So I'm going to change my y maximum. I'm going to put that up to 20. Let's see if I can see that. And I'm going to check something on here. Okay, I see the mistake here. I got to delete a couple parts here. There we go. Now if I graph it, there's our parabola. So I want to find the height, so the highest point. So I hit second, trace. I have a maximum, so number four. Left bound means I have to go to the left of the vertex, which it currently is. Hit enter. Go right bound, so I'll go to the right side of the vertex. Hit enter. Gas hit enter a third time. And it tells us that the maximum height is five feet. So I'm going to have the max height would be five feet. And then if I grab my calculator to find how far from this point to this point, I have second trace. I'm going to find a zero, number two. And really, I can't have negative distance, so we're going to say from here to here. So left bound, left bound of the x-intercept means I got to go to the left of the x-intercept, which means I'm above the x-axis. So currently, I'm above the x-axis. I hit enter. Right bound means I go below the x-axis. Hit enter. Guess hit enter a third time. Now it'll tell us the distance is 5.1622777. I'm going to make the distance to the nearest tenth, which will be 5.2 feet. Question 8. What is the vertex of the parabola for the graph of f of x equaling 3 times x minus 4 squared plus 3? So this is my h, this is my k. My vertex is always my h and k. So here, my vertex would be 4, 3. And because my a is positive, so when the a is positive, it opens upward, and you have a minimum. When you have a is negative, you have it opens downward, and you have a maximum. So for this one, my A is positive, so this would mean I have a minimum value. Question 9. The coefficient of determination, R squared, is used to find the best function model for the given data. Write the following values from strongest, which means closest to 1, to weakest, which means furthest from 1. So if I look at my decimals here, 0 0.995 is the strongest, it's the closest to one. Then I have 0 0.993, then I have 0 0.899, and the weakest is 0 0.818. And question 10, use the quadratic formula to solve this one, and it says round to the nearest tenth. So, on my calculator, I would do this. Negative b, so our a is here, our b is here, and our c is here. The opposite of b, which is negative 5, plus or minus the square root of 5 squared, so my b squared, minus 4 times a, which is 4, times c, which is negative 6, and parentheses on the outside, divided by parentheses 2 times my a, which is 4. Then I'm going to grab my calculator. 
and I'm going to do parentheses negative 5 plus the square root of 5 squared. Now if your b is negative, you have to make sure that you have a negative 5 in parentheses and then the square on the outside. Or you can just always have, just use the positive form because if you square any number, it's going to be a positive form. Always, if you don't do that, your answer is not going to be correct. So I have 5 squared minus 4 times 4 times negative 6 and parentheses. So on the 83, I have to put the end parentheses to say where I'm ending my radical. End parentheses again to end my numerator. Then I'm going to divide by parentheses 2 times 4. End parentheses, which will give me x equaling 0.75 or 3 fourths. That's one of my answers. To find the other one, I would hit second, enter to re put everything in there, and then I just change one sign from a plus to a minus, and that will give me a negative 2. So my zeros would be 0.75 and x equaling a negative 2. Question 11. Use b squared minus 4ac to find the value of the discriminant. Then use the discriminant to determine the number of real solutions. So if the discriminant is negative, I have zero real solutions. If it's equal to zero, I have one real. And if it's positive, I have two real. So I start with my formula, b squared minus 4ac. Here's my a, here's my b, here's my c. So my b is negative 4, my a is 2, and my c is 10. This is going to give me 16 minus 80, which will give us a negative 64. And negative 64 tells us that I have zero real solutions. And our last two questions. Question 12. Given that f of x equaling x minus 9 and g of x equaling 3x squared minus 2x plus 5, find f minus g of x. So I'm going to take my f of x, which is x minus 9, and I have to subtract from that g of x, which is 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. Now, when I subtract a polynomial, it's easier if you add the opposite. So I'm changing all of the signs in the second polynomial. Or you think about it, you're distributing a negative 1. Now I can solve 0x squared plus a negative 3x squared is a negative 3x squared. 1x plus 2x is a positive 3x. And a negative 9 plus a negative 5 is a negative 14. So my final answer would be negative 3x squared plus 3x minus 14. And our final one, I'm going to be multiplying g times f of x. So g of x would be 3x squared minus 2x plus 5. And I'm going to multiply that by x minus 9. So I distribute the 3x squared times x, which gives me 3x to the third. 3x squared times not negative 9 is a minus 27x squared. Distribute the negative 2. Negative 2x times x is a negative 2x squared. Negative 2x times negative 9 is a positive 18x. And then I distribute the 5, which is 5 times x, which is a positive 5x. And x times negative 9 is a negative 45. All I need to do now is combine like terms, which my final answer would be 3x cubed minus 29x squared plus 23x minus 45. So that is the review 
on Module 10, Working with Quadratic Functions.